guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope this finds you all well. Something a little bit different today on Conquering the Capitals. We are going to do an end of season review. Luckily, Football Manager as well have obviously really upgraded this part of the game this year. So we'll have a template to work off. But it gives people an opportunity who maybe have struggled to keep up with all the episodes just to know how we got on here at Dulwich Hamlet in our first season. Of course, if you do enjoy today's episode, please drop a like down below for me. Subscribe to the channel for more Football Manager content and make sure those notifications are turned on so you can keep up to date with our adventure, I suppose it is, through Conquering the Capitals, even if it is just simply these season review so without further ado let's get stuck in the 2020-21 season how did we get on well we had a couple of new arrivals to start with Luke Kanakov being the first he came to us with regards to being a free transfer in goal he was our first choice goalkeeper for most of the season and as you can see he's had an okay time of it nine clean sheets 16 goals conceded in the 19 appearances he made for us a 6.88 average rating and he did pretty okay for us as did this man Jake Kenyon he mainly actually played at left wing as opposed to left back four goals eight assists for him a 6.88 as well again he did pretty well and then Aloni and Kelsey Mooney he did all right 13 appearances four goals one assist to 6.82 again not really playing up front he mainly played on the right wing so only three were brought into what was a pretty strong squad to begin with and they were able to do a pretty good job of it we finished champions of the National League South, 40 games, 29 wins, only the three losses. They came against Eastbourne, Borough, Concord and Chelmsford, all 1-0 losses. 95 points the total, a goal difference of plus 57. And we finished the season, I think it ended up being 23 games unbeaten. You obviously last saw me when we beat St Albans. We had four wins and two draws to finish the season. Danny Mills, our top goal scorer, our home attendance being pretty good at 1,904. And we definitely, definitely exceeded the playoffs that the board wanted us to meet. We got to the champions. And of course, there were some really wonderful moments along the way. We beat Hampton and Richmond 5-0. I think that game was actually featured on the channel. 7-3 uh, win over Welling as well. And the goal of the season came from Daniel Ojo. A wonder strike from 27 metres out, it would seem. And I think... It, all in all, we scored loads of goals, we didn't concede many and it was a really, really exciting season to watch with the quite attacking 4-2-4 tactic that we went for. Financially, we did all right. Um, 562 shirts sold, McGregor, Kenyon, Henry, Timlin and Barbosa being the main shirt sold. Timlin won't be with us next year, nor will Barbosa. Hopefully, Kenyon and McGregor definitely will be, and Corey Henry might well be as well. We brought in some nice money, sponsorship-wise, broadcast revenue, etc., and the reputation remained pretty much the same, and the finances weren't too bad. Our main 11, then, of the season, I think this will come as no surprise to any. Luka Nakov in goal. A back four of Barnes and Barlow, David and Ojo. Barbosa and McGregor were in the middle with Henry on the right, Kenyon on the left, Mullings and Mills up front. That, I think, for anyone who has watched most of the episodes this season, will say that that was our best 11 for sure. As you can see, everyone bar Kenyon, Barbosa and Nakov averaged rated over a seven it was a fantastic season 19 goals for Mills 18 goals for Mullings 16 goals for Henry I think that is a pretty good return and I think one player we do need to mention in amongst all of this and I think in a minute he'll probably be nominated as player of the season is Giovanni McGregor 12 assists and nine goals from the center of midfield he has been an absolute wonder this year and thank god we've managed to keep him for next season as well and as i mentioned i thought he might well be player of the season should we find out here we go 
He sure is. The fans player of the season was Giovanni McGregor. The young player of the season was also Giovanni McGregor. The signing of the season goes to Luka Nakov and the goal of the season goes to Daniel Ojo. As you can see, I got manager of the month a total of four times during this season. I don't think Mays has come out yet, but I might well get it a fifth. You never know. No one has won anything in the National League South. The top goal scorer is Mills. Most assists, McGregor. Most player of the match awards went to the Dulwich, Virgil van Dijk, Sandro and Barlow. He unfortunately is not going to be with us next year. And to go along with his player of the season wins, Giovanni McGregor also had the highest average rating. For us then now, just to finish, Danny Mills with the goals. Most goals in a match was Alassani. A few players got hat-tricks. Uh, most clean sheets, 11 by Nakov. And the worst discipline, the naughty boy, was Kuwagika David. 10 yellow cards, 2 red cards. And that is something that you'll need to work on next year. And the history has been made. We were champions of the National League South. And it was a superb season for the Hamlet, who exceeded expectations throughout the campaign. And claimed a deserved title. Thank you very much to Liam Bull of Sky Sports News. There it is then. That is how the season went for us. We were worthy champions. And hopefully we can continue that form into the National League. Which of course I will see you for the start of in the next episode. I do however hope you have enjoyed today's season review and if you have please leave a like down below for me. Subscribe to the channel for more Football Manager videos and thank you all for coming along and watching.